So let's go ahead and turn off our volume builder. Let's turn off our subdivision surface. This is really what our soft body is. So it's going to be performant. Uh, so we can right click in here, just like we did it for the rubber head. We'll go in here to bullet tags, soft body. And in case you skipped all those videos, hit control D that goes into your edit project settings tab over here in the attributes tab. This is your project settings. We're gonna go in here to bullet expert. Uh, steps for frame, uh, solver iterations. We already went over this cl uh, collision margin. I think these are probably fine, but if you want to play with them, that's where they'd be. And then uh, again, back to our head surface, dynamics body. We have our soft body options. We have our collision options here. In this case, just like we did earlier, we're going to change it from automatic to moving mesh. Same thing with Patrick, which I think his should have stayed the same. Yeah, shape is moving mesh. And then for dynamics, uh, in, the, in the case of Patrick, it's triggering immediately. However, on my head, I want his, him to be uh, triggered only when he's been interacted with or on collision. So basically, Patrick's going to fall, hit his head, and then when that happens, then this thing will start to deform. Uh, now, because I've, you know, when I went through and I did my displacement, I kind of inflated him. Uh, overall, I'm going to go ahead and scale him down uniformly just a bit. And then maybe move him up just a bit. So now, again, if I go through here, and again, we have a subdivision surface on here, and we have a volume builder. So actually, before I start moving stuff around, I probably want to turn all that on so I can go through here and be like, oh, let's go ahead and move him down just a bit. So he's still plugged into his body there. There we go. And then now while we run the simulation, I'll go ahead and turn volume builder and subdivision surface off. So it runs quickly. We'll turn off our IPR render. And then now we'll turn Patrick back on, hold on Alt, and tap him. And then if I go through here and play, it'll fall on him and deform him and knock him about. Let's hit Shift F to go back to frame one here. We'll go ahead and move Patrick back a little bit. And you know what? Uh, just like we did before, let's go into Patrick's mass custom density. We'll say two. So he really hits hard. He falls quick and then he'll fall down. Boom, bounce on that head. Looks like we do need to play a little bit with these uh, soft body for the head setting. So we'll go in here to soft body Let's take that stiffness up to one, maybe structural to 150. And Patrick's mass will turn down to like 1.1. There we go. So he kind of bounces off. Let's do shift F. I'd like to take the head with it. So what I'm going to do is it does look like the head is kind of interpenetrating with his body. Again, we did quite a few things with that displacement that might be moving stuff around here. So again, I'm going to shrink that body in a bit and let's go ahead and play it again maybe in a bit more there we go takes the head with it boom smashes on the ground and we're good to go uh, and again if we want to see this in action let's hit shift f uh, i'm not going to play it because it's going to be kind of slow but i'm going to go ahead and turn on my subdivision surface turn on my volume builder now it's going to render that foam and then with my ipr off well actually <laughs> I'm doing this I'm going to turn both these off I'm going to get it I'm going to get it on a frame that kind of deforms him I'm going to go back in here turn these back on turn on our renderer again actually it looks like he's interpenetrating let's do shift f and actually as I was playing around with this before I got into the next section um, just so we're clear and it, it is everything is working as expected if I have the subdivision surface on I'm going to turn off my IPR render and then I go ahead and play you're going to see it's going to deform the head and the sort of the surfaces and the displacers that are driving it. So it is, def you know, deforming this head just fine. And then now if we turn on our volume builder and then go in here and do an IPR render, that'll be the updated mesh with the foam. So if it's not, if it's for some reason that subdivision surface is snapping back to the original form, that's how you can get around that. It's just basically have it on while you're doing your collision. I'm not, again, I'm not sure if that's a, just this session type of glitch or whatever, but uh, that's that result there. So now you can see that foam deforming along with uh, Patrick just for like preview purposes. We'll go up here to our render settings. And this is of course, uh, you know, under output is where you can change it to, you know, 1920 by 1080 or whatever. Uh, frame range, we do all frames. That's going to do our whole animation. And then if we're ready to render this out, then we go in here to render, add to render queue. I'll go ahead and get rid of these. So once you've done all that, and you go through and render out your frames, uh, this is a result you'll get. It'll go ahead and again, it'll deform as expected. It'll hit and boom and then flip around and bounce and then you'll see the nose it'll pop up. Uh, so again, it's just deforming that low res head and then adding actual subdivision, adding displacement to that. The volume builder is rendering out the, the foamy part 
and then it's all uh, rendering as expected. And again, it has to be real geometry in this case, not the fake, you know, at render time displacement like we did with the rubber head. Now, one thing I couldn't do was actually color uh, this foam to be like our original head. So if I go through here, you know, I guess we just turn this back on. So if I go into the uh, RS volume here, uh, there wasn't anything I could find that would allow me to plug in like a color map into any of these channels, like the scatter or the absorption. You can do gradients and stuff, but I couldn't say, hey, based on this texture map, uh, apply this color. And that makes sense because what the volume builder is doing if you remember, if we turn these back on, um, it's taking arbit it's taking geometry and turning it into arbitrary geometry. There is no UVs on this thing. So it would have a UV map and would go, what am I supposed to do with this color? Again, like I mentioned earlier, when you're doing the rubber head, there may be a way to say, hey, here's a higher res object and go ahead and create your phone based on that. And then maybe do a projection map based on a, like a wrap to form envelope that has a texture applied that can project that texture onto the foam. That I don't know, but um, for what it's worth, there's how you do your foam with displacement, with collision objects. Again, I want to give a shout out to uh, I Go by Zach. Definitely go check these videos out. They'll be in the description of this video. On the Rubberhead version, uh, that's kind of its own weird thing. Uh, in this version, it's pretty close to what he has, minus the weird displacement stuff we had to do to get our SpongeBob thing working. But I hope you enjoyed that. I'm going to go through if you just want to stick around and see, you know, the rest of the boring setup for this body and uh, the Patrick color, you can. We'll be getting to that next.